starting to realize from doing a lot of these reviews, there's times when I just, I talk about Wakazashis and I talk about all these Japanese style swords. And I assume that you guys know what these swords are and what they mean in history. Because maybe somebody out there doesn't really know what the hell is a Wakazashi. So when we talk about Wakazashi, we're talking about more or less a Japanese short sword. Shorter than the katana, the full-size katana, and longer than the tanto. So it's somewhere right in the middle. And it's called a Daisho set, where a samurai would carry all three swords, each having different purposes and having different meanings. Obviously, the katana is made for battle. The tanto is a, uh, a just a last resort knife. It's also used for other things, but we don't talk about that. And the wakizashi, which I'm reviewing now, is kind of like a secondary weapon, not really used for full out combat, but it's more for like a second resort or mostly indoor use where you have close quarters where you don't have room to kind of swing the katana around. So you have the wakizashi that you're able to def do offense or defense, depending on where you are, and you'll be able to have some quick, precise cuts and slices from the wakizashi in closed quarters where you don't have the room to do a full out, you know, crazy swing with the katana. So that's what the wakizashi basically comes into play in a daisho set from a samurai. So historically, the wakizashi was an intricate part in the Japanese culture to have your katana, your wakizashi, and your tanto on the obi belt. And again, the wakizashi did have its specific place in terms of what the use of the wakizashi was to the samurai. But to us, wakizashi is a great one-handed weapon. It's a short sword. It's also just a lot of fun to cut with. If you like one-handed weapons, wakizashi is definitely something you should look at. Okay, so before we go any further, I just want to show you really quick romanceofmen.com, the ordering process of ordering a custom wakizashi. It's pretty cool. Everything's pretty much laid out for you in terms of the options. You can see right now an introductory rate of about $140 for a custom wakizashi build where you can build your own wakizashi sword according to the Parts that they have in their inventory so here you have obviously hand sharpness you have your sharpness level you have your different type of sire options now you can basically see bigger pictures of this when you go all the way down to the bottom you also have hishigami wrapping you have standard wrapping you have your different types of detail you also have an option of doing a full wrap of ray skin around the suka which is actually a really great option not everybody has that or just a panel ray skin obviously you know as you add things on it will make it more expensive you could also do blade engraving where you could do up to 100 characters that can they can engrave onto the blade but if you scroll down, you have the basic dimensions of what you have here on the sword once it's built. You have your different types of steels. They even tell you what blade materials they recommend for certain cutters. So you have your carbon steels, you have your manganese, you have your spring steels, your T10s, and so on and so forth. Then you have bigger pictures where you can see the different type of sire options that you have that you can build and match with also your different type of finishing pieces in terms of your sets with your Kashida, your Suba, your Minuki, and your Fuchi. Everything is pretty much there. I like the fact that they give you large pictures, detailed pictures, because not many sites actually give you big pictures like this where you can really see in detail exactly what you're looking to order. So... The whole ordering process was pretty much a blue, a breeze. It was a pleasure. It was nice to have these detailed pictures. And uh, they give you recommendations as far as how you should go about doing the ordering process. And then once you do that, you submit it. You log in or register, and uh, you're pretty much there and ready to go. And I think the lead time is about 20 days. Yeah, lead time is about 20 business days. All right, guys, so this Wakazashi was given to me for review from the company called Romance of Men. You have seen Romance of Men, I think, quite a few times on my channel right now. This is probably the fourth piece I've gotten from them, and I thank you, as always. I'm always appreciative when companies entrust me in having their creations and being able to review them and give you guys my humble opinion as far as how they feel, how they're built, and in an effort to also have the company see the comments and see the reviews and be able to improve their product with maybe some shortcomings that could probably be improved and also give them credit to where credit is due if the sword is coming up to parts of what they're trying to do. So let's start basically guys with the sword itself. Now I'll speak in detail a little bit more of the fit and finish of the sword, but the fit and finish is, the, is excellent. There's no rattle or anything like that. It has a great, great, great fit from out of the box of the sword into the Saya, which I always, always appreciate. The Saya itself is very unusual. I did choose this in the custom shop which you saw on the website. And this was one of the options there, which you can choose from it. This is kind of like an imitation snake skin, I believe, or alligator skin, something like that. Some kind of a lizard skin 
but it is imitation, but it is texturized. You can feel the texture of everything. You can see it's different on each side, and they did a really phenomenal job, and it just adds to the whole motif of this black and gray sword, because that's pretty much what I wanted, like a black and gray type of sword. And that's basically exactly what they did. Deo is not anything that's serviceable. It's just there for show. It's very thin, and it's not something that basically maybe a practitioner will be able to really use a really good Sageo, but it definitely just adds to the look. It's just there for the look, but if you wanted to use this in um, in class or something like that or have it on your obi belt, you definitely want to get a different type of Sageo, but it is a handsome looking Sageo. I really like the way it looks and just how it completes the whole look of the sword with that. It's a nice stitching, a nice stitching. You can see the stitching on the end and all that. It's just a really nice stitching to it. It's a standard suka. I think it's called the Imogata. The standard suka. Uh, basically that you find in many, many different types of iterations of Japanese swords. You have Rico shape, you have a couple, couple different types of shapes of the Suka, but this is kind of the standard shape. They did a great job in basically hand in, in bringing this thing together. The Ito, like I've seen on a lot of their iterations of late, is very, very, very tight and barely move it in millimeters. They did a great job in also evening up the diamonds, giving you some really good blackened ray skin. It's real ray skin on the sword, even at a 190 price point, which is great that they're giving you real ray skin you can see it it's definitely good quality great quality sukamaki great quality in giving you some real leather and giving it really tight now there is options also on that side of doing a full wrap samagawa this is panel wrap you could do a full wrap and you could also add hishigami so it'll even be more even more rock solid and have a little bit of a lift on the knots really really good job on the kashida the transitions are pretty good. It's a little bit of an overlap on one side and perfectly perfect on the other side, but for the most part, very serviceable. Nothing I felt like, and at this point, I did do all the cutting with the video. Nothing dug into my hand. I felt very comfortable. Nothing loosened up during the heavy, even the heavy cutting that I did on the vines. The kasha stayed very good. The knots stayed very good. The Ito's didn't, the Ito knots didn't move at all. And other than being a little bit slick in my hand, because that's just the imperfection of having leather, that if your hands are wet, it can get a little slick. Other than that, perfectly comfortable and usable in my hand. I felt grip, I felt secure. Enough real estate on a 9.4 inch handle to be able to take a couple different grips of the handle, maybe set it back for maybe some reverse cuts and things like that, like you'll see. So neat, really nice job on the Sukamaki, the shaping of the handle and the tightness of the Ito diamonds and everything else casting on the kashira is very very good i like the uh the flower motif type of theme uh it pretty much is prominent throughout the entire sword and uh their moldings as i said before uh the moments of men is doing a great job on the moldings i've seen jeku sino swords a lot of the same stuff moldings done over and over again I've seen with Romance of Men something that's new and fresh, something that you don't normally see every day. It's uh, just different types of spins on maybe some traditional pieces out there, and they put their own little spin on it. But from whatever they're doing, they're giving you a really nice casting. The Fuchi, more of the same, a little bit of an overlap on the Ito, but for the most part, it's if I really wanted to be a perfectionist, I would say this could have been done a little bit better in terms of the overlap of the Ito on one side, and it's not perfectly aligned. But again, for $190, it's very, very tight and very, very clean. And there's nothing that's gonna hook your hand. That's the important thing. For by using, it's nothing that your hand is gonna hook on. And it felt perfectly comfortable holding it from here or down here. I didn't feel anything, any type of discomfort whatsoever from the Fuji or the Kashida, even though it's not perfectly aligned. Aesthetically, you would like it to be. And if you're, if you're at a certain price point, you want it to be, you expect it to be. But sub $200, like this sword is, to have something as, as close and tight as this is i would say i would commend them for doing a great job on it. the suba is also a really really nice piece solid piece i don't think it's iron might be like a uh, metal alloy and it's also lighter than iron so that's why it also lends to the to lightness and the swiftness and the balance of the sword when you're cutting with it which is a benefit to the overall weight of the sword but it is a beautiful piece great great details again it's got a uh, flower motif on one side, the other side is kind of like a lion. I think it's hard to make out sometimes. It looks like a lion kind of going down the Suba, which is really, really good, a good looking uh, molding, but they did a nice job with it. I, I really happy with the the moldings that I picked, the uh, set that I picked with the Fuchi Nakasha. This came from their side. You can choose this yourself if you want it. I will put include the stock numbers of what I chose on the description if you wanted to build something exactly like this or if you wanted to pick similar pieces. That I did try to clean it off, but this is after I did all the cutting. You see the dragon engraving on the blade. 
But before we get into that, you see the Habaki, which is a nice silver Habaki with the copper sepas. Now, I would have liked to maybe have silver sepas, but you know, it, the brass sepas, I kind of stand out a little bit, but I think the silver sepas will probably fit the motif a little bit better and be a completely gray and black sword. It's a pretty tight fitting of the Habaki on the blade. I would have liked it a little bit tighter, but it's, it's very good. And again, after doing all the cutting, no looseness, no rattles or anything like that. Extremely tight onto the blade. It's hugging the blade really well, even after all the hard cutting. And I do like the look of having a different not run-of-the-mill dime a dozen type of habaki that you're able to choose and they do have some nice habakis that you can choose from this is a 20 inch t10 blade it was very hard to kind of photograph this sword to get the hormone it's a very it's a prominent hormone, but it's also a light hormone you really got to be in a really good lighting in order to get this picture that's not a very you know it doesn't really stick out or punch you in the face you know in terms of some hormones especially the other sword that i reviewed the ebi katana lobster katana was really prominent and had a specific type of polish this you're not paying for that type of polish to have the hormone really punch you in the face through the lens or anything like that but it is if you look closely you can see a nice wavy line of a real clay tempered hormone and it's a, also it's a glossy blade it's a polished glossy blade it doesn't have the two tones or three tones or anything like that but for cutting purposes it is a good blade to be able to cut with and you don't have to worry about basically ruining any really good aesthetics on the blade if you're looking to use it and cut with it it's got the dragon engraving on both sides which is pretty cool the thickness of the uh the blade at the hilt or the uh the suba is around 0.6 centimeters or 0.23 inches and then it obviously has a distal taper with a nice point uh, going to the Kasaki. Theo says T10 with true vivid hormone. Again, if you wanted to probably pay for a better cosmetic type of polish to really have the hone stick out, you could probably have that selection if you want. But if you wanted to kind of spend, you know, that price point around 190 with the T10 and having this hormone the way it is, and if you're fine with it, it's a perfectly good and usable blade, especially if you're looking to cut with it. The more and more I have this in my hand, guys, the more and more I feel like it's just such a well-balanced sword. I did a lot of cutting with it. It really cut it pretty much sliced really well very 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 sharp out of the box um, very impressed with the sharpness level that came out of the box i was doing some really good slicing and really good cutting on the tommy and the vines and all that so let's get over to that segment and let's see how this baby performs so this wakizashi compared to others that i've tried is a little bit lighter overall and it just gives it a little bit more of a different type of balance pops out perfectly goes in right it doesn't come out of place we're reviewing this in the premise that it is 190 dollars but we're also going to review it first in terms of quality and how the wakizashi or any type of sword should be put together and if it basically crosses all the t's and dots all the i's and it's still at, a, at that price range then you know you got a pretty good bang for the buck and a really good value you think you're able to kind of have some control over the point for the most part so it looks it feels like a really good balanced overall sword again no heavy spots three inches or so away from the handle in terms of the balance of it so it's definitely a very good balanced sword and i think this is good if you if somebody just wants to kind of just use it use it for trick cuts or just changing directions or something like that or something that just not doesn't have that much fatigue in the hand i think this is definitely be a good wakizashi to go with As you can tell, nice control, nice able. I was able to kind of find the point, go wherever it needed to go. So it's, uh, as I showed you basically just doing air cuts, you could feel doing air cuts, how good the control of the sword is when you're actually trying to execute cuts and you're able to have the point where you want it to go and have a good sharp edge. You're pretty much in the game, basically doing your Thomas Shigiri, but this, this felt pretty damn good. Talk about a slice and dice type of sword, but this is a good, good, sharp, out of the box slicing sword with a lot of control. To be able to get that fine of a cut, with well, my skill level, put this thing in, a, in the hands of a good practitioner, it's really gonna shine.
And again, super, super fine, fine ass cut on a reverse grip. The new way that I'm wrapping this tatami, this tatami roll is cut is wrapping it from the loose end as opposed to the folded end, which I used to do. And I, it makes for some cleaner cuts with less fraying. So if you notice over here, you have the bend over here where it's kind of, uh, it's folded into. So on the inner core on top, okay, it's a lot cleaner because it's being folded, okay, from the loose ends in. So it's the loose ends in are folded in. And then on the outside, you only have the folded end, so you don't have the frame part. So when you do the cuts, it should be a little bit of a cleaner cut on the tatami. And I thank you, Matthew Jensen, actually, for giving me that pointer because I was doing it the other way the whole time. And I think this makes for some really nice, cleaner, tighter cuts. This uh, tatami mat has been soaking all night and it's been uh, drying for about two hours. So it should be a pretty nice, solid, good target. Nice cuts. Again, good sharpness on the edge, a lot of control. Sail through the tatami with no problem. T10 blade, even hit the stand. I don't see any damage chips or rolls. No bends, which I don't imagine any bends whatsoever cutting the tatami, but uh, nice tatami roll. And also you can see how the cuts are a lot cleaner and they're not freeing in terms of how you roll it. So definitely how you roll the tatami makes a big difference. You see how clean, you see how the fraying part is on the inner core and you don't have that ugly fraying when you're doing the cuts and it stays in place a lot better. And I felt like just uh, the slices are a lot better. So it's just a, I think we're gonna do a video, uh, Matt and I, we're gonna concentrate on basically how to roll the tatami mats to get the cleanest possible, tightest cuts. You also don't wanna cut them, roll them too tight because you roll them too tight you can't get the uh can't get in the hole can't get the spike in the hole if it's too tight so too tight may be good sometimes but not for tatami <laughs> that's what she said so <laughs> yeah nice clean cut new way of rolling tatami mat so very satisfied with that and satisfied with how this sword handled tatami mats i like it. now the watermelon watermelon cuts are basically just for fun i mean it's uh, you know the sharpness of the sword is there but again just a further testament to see how much control i have over the point and the direction of where i want the point to go with the watermelon cuts uh and it, they're just fun to cut Slice and dice, guys, slice and dice. This thing did awesome. Great slicing sword. Still tastes good. Wow, you gotta love that summer watermelon, man. Good stuff, my face is all dirty, nice. Mm, good. Lately, what I've been trying to do is to keep everything consistent in terms of my testing of these swords. Now, the last couple of Wakizashis and swords that I tested, I actually, uh, I did all my normal testing and then I actually went to vines. So just to see, like there's certain vines that I know a lot of these Waki won't go through. Some of the thicker vines, it's a light sword. It's not a very heavy sword. It's not gonna, the whole point is not to clean cut right through some of these vines. It's about seeing how much the edge could hold up, the T10 blade, if there's any vibrations that would cause anything to dislodge or loosen on the blade. So it's just something that I'm doing so you guys don't have to do to see how the build quality is on these swords. Taking some nice chunks out of it. Yeah, I tell you, if I keep on hacking, this thing is definitely gonna come apart. Not bad. And brew. <sighs> I say not bad at all. It's a really thick vine. I wasn't able to get through it with any other any other sword, so this is uh, not too shabby.
Gotta say, it's handling itself well. So for your light source, you really gotta get a good hack out of it. You can see I was even using two hands, but other than the uh, staining from the sap, from the vines, I don't see any damage. And it has yet to take a set, no set whatsoever. And the edge, as far as looks pretty good. I mean, nothing that I could see with the naked eye. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Right here. A little bit right here, but I think this might have been when I hit the stand. But for the most part, very, very fine edge with the fingernail test. And it's uh, handled itself well. Check on uh, loosens of the guard, the Suba. Uh, Ito is still very, very, very tight as it was out of the box. Fuchi's good. Kasha is good. Everything, uh, everything seems pretty tight. You know, pretty much no problem as far as uh, out of the box. It's still as tight as everything was. Habaki and the blade looks pretty good. So uh, I'm doing it so you don't have to. But going into some really thick pieces of wood with a light wakizashi and having it basically fair come off pretty much unscathed other than maybe some surface scratches or whatever maybe some really micro abrasions it uh it's a pretty good build from romance of men and the t10 blade has some really good heat tempering for it to handle all that i dished out it's still a little bit slick as far as you know it's humid it's a humid day and it's a little bit slick as far as the uh the handle is concerned you know with the leather but it still stayed pretty secure in the hand and the e on it move and nothing shifted I think basically what they're giving you is a really good quality wakizashi, excellent fit and finish, a really good cutter, very well balanced sword, great sukumaki, great pieces, great molding. Uh, Romance of Men is giving you a lot of bang for your buck. So basically this sword coming in at about $190 is a very, very good deal. And I think you should jump on it because I believe that's not going to be, that's an introductory price. So if you're looking to get this exact sword or something like it with a T10 blade, for under $200, I think you should jump on it quick because I don't think the price of that is going to stay for very long. It might be going up a little bit, but maybe not too much. $190 at the current price point, but it's custom Wakizashi. And I customized the pieces and the parts, and I did kind of everything that I wanted to it. And for that price point and for the build quality and what they're giving you and the way it cut and how great it did on the slicing and the sharpness level out of the box and how it held up to the heavy cutting no you know everything is pretty much like brand new nothing kind of dislodged or anything like that no not much damage to the edge at all other than maybe some microchips i think it's a very good price okay for this pakwakizashi at about 190 dollars really good deal for romance and that